What's going on, everybody? Joseph Angadi here. I'm the writer and creator of Fantasy Distractions. I've created A Soldier's Crest. I've created Codename Moa. I do a bunch of different things. But uh, today I just wanted to talk about creating original characters. Uh, this isn't necessarily like a tutorial or anything. I'm just going to describe my favorite character that I've ever made. And uh, I hope I can encourage you guys to do the same or maybe inspire some people to make their own characters in the future. I stand there in awe. Before we get started, I just want to once again apologize. I am currently redoing my streaming slash YouTube room. I'm waiting to get a mic arm for this mic. So if sound and stuff is a little bit off, I'm still working on getting everything situated and set up. So I apologize in advance if anything sounds weird. If the background is kind of messy or uh, anything like that. I promise in a couple of weeks, uh, everything should look a lot better. I am I actually have a bunch of shelves behind me that I am planning to put up uh, probably after I finish this video. I wasn't sure if it was going to look too messy or if it would have taken me a long time to do, or I would have put them up before this video, but here we are. Also, before we start, just to clarify, yes, that is a Tonberry inside of an Easter peep. Uh, if you know what Final Fantasy is, you know what Tonberries are. It's just a Tonberry and an Easter peep. I have no other explanation for that. All right, before we uh, really get into the nitty gritty of my favorite character I've ever created, uh, there's a lot of backstory that goes into it. So back in um, when I was in high school, we'll just say around like 2003, 2004, 2005, something within that range. Um, I was heavily into the MMORPG Final Fantasy XI. Now, within that game, there were characters called Mithras, which were basically like cat girls, but not like full on furry cat girls. They were just cat girls. Um, I created a character in there named Laika um, because I wanted to play the ninja class and that race had higher agility and dexterity, which ultimately really didn't mean anything, but made the character. Tried to come up with a name. I eventually created the name Lyca, L-Y-C-A. Um, been used before. I've seen it a lot more in like media and stuff now. Um, but at the time, I thought it was cool. Made that character, and I played that character for about six years. That character and that name kind of became part of my online persona, and it's what most people knew me by, even though it was a female character and I'm obviously not a female. I never tricked anybody into thinking that I was a female character on that game or a female playing that game. Uh, I always was very upfront with people and told them that I was just playing this character because one, I thought the cat girls looked cool and two, uh, it was supposedly better for the class that I wanted to play. Fast forward a bit and they released Final Fantasy XIV. They have Makote in there that are basically a similar race to the Mithra. Between that, I was creating A Soldier's Crest, which was my first novel that I self-published, and I eventually got published, but I lost my publisher. It's kind of a whole big mess, but when writing A Soldier's Crest, I created a character named Mira, M-I-R-A. Mira was meant to be basically just fan service, like you see fan service in your favorite anime, or you know you have your TV shows that have that one like overly sexualized character you know i i intended for her to just be like fan servicey like add a little bit of sex appeal um to my book since that was kind of like the end thing to do she became so much more than what i intended for her to be as i started to show the book to people and started to let people read some chapters here and there uh, Mira is one of the, like the first side characters that pops up within a soldier's crest. So uh, you're introduced to her fairly early and uh, she adds a little bit of comic relief. Uh, like I said, a little bit of the sex appeal. She has a whole lot of personality. So Mira is a cat girl pirate who has found a way to sail on the seas around Chroma, which is the main continent in a soldier's crest. Their seas are all messed up. They, they rage a little too hard, so it, it's hard to actually travel across the sea, but Mira has found a way to navigate a boat through that mess. Uh, without giving away too many spoilers, uh, that, that's kind of her thing, right? She's a pirate in a world where not many people can travel by, by sea. When she meets Valak, they, who is the main character of A Soldier's Crest, they have a um, quite an interesting 
connection and uh, interaction, I should say. And as people began to read my my book and uh, read those chapters with Mira and Valak's interactions and stuff, I began to get like this crazy amount of positive feedback about Mira. Now, if you have read A Soldier's Crest, this is also a little bit spoilery, but um, she isn't in the book for very long. She doesn't die or anything, but she uh, she goes missing and you don't see her for the rest of the book. And I had written most of the book before I received that feedback, but I didn't really want to change the first book to include more Mira or to give like hints about what was happening. I wanted that to be something going forward into the second book so that you could learn and figure out what happened to her. But because of her insane popularity uh, amongst like the people that I know, like granted, my books aren't super, super famous. So uh, hopefully one day she'll be like a household name. But she was really just kind of uh, something that I talked about a lot with my friends uh, and anybody who actually read the books. Long story short, she became very important to me. And as I started to expand outside of uh, writing novels and writing books and things, I kind of took that character with me. So to take it back to Final Fantasy XIV, when it was time to make another cat girl character, I thought it would be nice to take a little break from Laika and play Mira. So I made Mira in the game. Um, it helped me develop a bit more of her uh, style and personality. Uh, they have very pirate-esque clothing in Final Fantasy XIV, so I was able to kind of like get some ideas from there and just piece together what I wanted her to look like. Um, her actual personality, though, began to expand even further because while I was trying to figure out everything with my publisher and um, the future of A Soldier's Crest, I decided to write a lot of side stories and a lot of short stories um, to, to fall in between the books so that I could upload them to Amazon if I felt like it while I was waiting to find a new publisher or possibly self-publish again. I released a ebook on Amazon that is a backstory and an, like an origin story for Mira. It was a lot of fun to write, uh, like a younger Mira, a little more serious at the beginning, but then she becomes a bit more of what we know her as in the first book. It was a lot of fun just kind of exploring that character more thoroughly. And the more her character has kind of evolved, and, and this even happens in the first book a bit, where she is kind of like this comedic character on the surface, she actually has quite a sad backstory. And this gives more dimensions to her character and it helped me flesh her out more thoroughly uh, going forward. Nowadays, I, I stream a lot on Twitch and she's become somewhat of like a mascot for our channel. Mira and Laika are, are both mascots. I ended up putting Laika into a Soldier's Crest as well. So there is this connection between the two that I won't spoil, but but they've, they've kind of become like a symbol of my Twitch channel now. When it comes to making merchandise or getting commissioned art made for Soldier's Crest, I often get Mira made first. I have tons of art that I've gotten made from people over the years. She's a character that really means a lot to me, and she's, she's quickly become my favorite character when she was really only supposed to be a side character that was temporary in my books. So that's my favorite original character. Uh, if you like this video and you want me to make more videos about my own original characters, let me know. Uh, I would love to hear your own original characters and your own favorites down in the comments. Uh, if you happen upon this video uh, through Twitter, feel free to leave me a message on Twitter about your favorite original character. And uh, maybe we'll do some more videos like this in the future. In the meantime, you can go check out Fantasy Distractions. We're now on Spotify as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.